Well, hello. How are you? I am good. I am bringing you something a little different on this Tuesday. I got some cards. I got these at, oh, sorry, um, a thrift store. I believe I showed it in a thrift store haul. Um, they're not full sets, but they're so cute, right? Um, just old cards. And I, I loved how the backs looked, the green and the blue. But I got those to use in the crafts, in the crafting. <laughs> I also got these at a store called Five Below, sometime around Christmas time. And they're like little mushroom cards. They're so flippin' cute. So this is what they look like. Aren't those adorable? And then the back looks like that. So what I thought I would do today, well, after I get these cards in here so my brain can focus, I thought that I would bring you some altered playing cards. And altered playing cards are just when you take your playing cards, playing cards of your choice. I mean, we all got playing cards, right? Do you have any sets that are missing a few and you don't know what to do with them? Don't throw them away. No, no, no. We can do lots of things with them and this is going to be just one. So I've got one of the mushroom cards here and I went ahead and altered this little beauty and you'll see how in the video there's the back with some journaling space and then we've got one of the vintage cards and I used some of the vintage rickrack that I had and some of the fabric from the journal from the cover so it matches and there's the back I punched a little hole in it, put a little dangle. There's a dangle on the other one too, but some of it didn't get recorded, however, at the very end. Um, like some of the dangling, some of the threading along the edges here did not get put in. Um, this didn't get shown. My phone ran out of space <laughs> while I was recording, so. <laughs> um, but, you know, you'll get to see it all put together with the exception of the very beginning where I was starting off the layering of the cards, which you'll see. Um, I took some book pages and some other little pages and I had little pieces glued on the cards and then I ripped the part that wasn't glued. So it kind of left like just a little piece of it. You'll see that. Um, you'll see, you won't see me doing that, but you'll see the finished product of those little pieces, um, after they dried so I could rip them. Um, for some reason, I guess I forgot to record the part where I was just gluing the little pages on it. I think I figured that I would just talk about it in the voiceover, but it looked a little disjointed. So I wanted to tell you here, <laughs> but I thought we would do some little side crafting in addition to our junk journal series because I want to add things to it. So while I'm making things that I'm going to put into this journal, um, during this whole process, I might as well video, video, video tape. Oh my God, I'm showing my age. I may as well record what I'm doing and share it with you so you can make them too or something like them and add them into your journals. Now, if you don't have playing cards, any cardstock would do. You can cut it to whatever size you want. You know, really, we're just playing and we're doing it with junk. Um, I used book pages, stamps that I had, um, the little charms I think I got from Timu for like a dollar for a whole pack. Um, you know, I had the old Rick Rack that I had gotten a while back. Um, I used cicada paper, which you'll see for uh, the front of this card. Um, that I got off of Timu super 
super affordable. But yeah, like most of these things I had here. This is paper that I had at home, just some lined paper. Um, and the cards. You know, I picked some up because I don't <laughs> I don't have any that have missing cards, so I needed to go get some. But anyway, so that's what we're gonna do today. If you wanna watch, a stick around. And then if you make some, come and share with me and everybody else in the Facebook group. We all want to see. We all want to see what you do. This is going to be fun. Craft along with me, okay? <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I'm going to tell you for now. And we'll just get on into the video and voiceover. Okay? Enjoy. So we're kind of starting off a little bit after since I forgot to record but I took some book pages and just put some glue stick around the pages um, randomly well on the cards randomly and then stuck the little bits of pages to the glue pressed them down for a while until they were mostly dry because I was being super duper impatient as usual when I'm crafting but you can see here that I'm just trying to see what's dry so I can rip the parts that aren't stuck to the card right off of the card. So it leaves a distressed little chunk of book page. And this isn't necessary, but I wanted to do some layering because that's kind of what time and age does to things. And I really wanted it aged and grungy. So this was just me starting to layer the grunge. Um, not every aspect of these things will be seen on the finished product. But they are if you look close enough. <laughs> So it just takes me a minute to get all of these ripped off since they were not fully dry. But it's also fun to do. And real quick too, with the mushroom cards, uh, I did file the card down on the front and the back with just a little nail file just to rough it up a little bit so the glue can really grab. The other cards were so old and worn, I didn't bother with all of that. But see, there you go. That's what it looks like once it's all ripped apart. See, there's just some pieces that are super thin, you know. Um, I wasn't very, very showy with that one, was I? And here I'm taking the cicada paper that I got from Timu, surprise, surprise, seriously, their craft supplies. I could spend all day, every day, shopping their craft supplies. I was getting out some distress ink because I decided instead of the cicada paper right now, I wanted to further layer by distressing the cards a bit before putting something over it. So I added some of the Distress Ink now. That Distress Ink is Tim Holtz. You can find it on Amazon. I think that's where I got mine. And they actually have um, good like smaller sizes. So it's like a pack of four but they're like a quarter of the size, which is fine because if you don't craft a ton, you're not going to use it all that fast because I've had these for years and I'm still going. And I mean, they're the larger size, but the smaller ones are cheaper. So you get a little bit more variety. Now, if you want to just kind of get something to grunge it up and you like the way this one looks, this one is called Vintage Photo, I believe. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'll let you know. And here I am just doing the other one. Voiceovers are so weird. 
I feel like I just don't have enough to say. <laughs> it's so much easier when I'm crafting to be chatty, but it was cold this morning, so I didn't want to go to my table. I wanted to sit down and just watch YouTube and for copyright reasons, that means I have to mute my video <laughs> and just come back and tell y'all about it later. But that's okay because the crafting was still fun and this is what I would normally be doing. Half the time I don't even craft at my table because I'll just put my little tiny desk on my bed and have fun with that. Okay, there is the napkin. I'm kind of trying to see what area I want because I do want to see the cards. Like, I want to see part of the card so you know it was a playing card. So you just are seeing me kind of figure out what I'm using for which card. The cicada paper really tickled my fancy for that older card, especially because the narrow piece that I had left over fit perfectly like width wise to the one card how y'all doing today it's only Tuesday I can't believe it I wish the week was over and it was already the weekend to be honest <laughs> but I am excited because next week is spring break so no school which means no driving if I don't want to which also means I can have a girl's day with either my sister-in-law or my mother-in-law or my other mother-in-law. I can do something. Maybe one of the days of next week. Be nice. Get out of the house a little bit. Maybe do a little vloggy vlog. I don't know. What do y'all want? What do you want to see next week over spring break? Okay, here I finally get started and I'm gluing the card you see me check my glue because I had just distressed the card I was so aggravated because it was getting on the glue but that's okay the glue is almost gone it's almost time to open a new one but I just glue I was starting to glue the paper and realize it'd be easier if I just glue the top of the card because the paper is so thin but look at how beautiful that cicada paper just lays on top of the card and shows everything through it oh I love it. That's cicada paper, top notch. If you haven't got that and you're a crafter, you should because it's fabulous. And now I'm getting my file because I'm just going to file it. Instead of cutting it, you just file it off just like you do with those uh, sticker nails. All right, I decided to speed this up while I was filing away because, you know, it was like a good minute of me just filing and filing and filing and nobody needs to watch that for a whole minute. So <laughs> there it is finally off and I'm probably just going to start cleaning it up or something. I don't know. It's been a minute since I recorded. This video was, I was thinking, going to be a nice, easy video to do, sit down and just craft and record. But when I decided to watch TV, I made it more difficult because <laughs> I had to come over and do a voiceover. So it's like recording the video twice, if that makes sense. So I recorded it and then tried to edit as much as possible and then hopped on to do the voiceover. But it's still fun. I just think next time I won't watch TV. So here I am just adding another layer of distressing on top of the layer of distressing I added on top of the layer of distressing. <laughs> we just keep going in this same cycle. cycle. And what am I doing? What am I looking at? Oh, I'm looking at stamps. Okay, stamp time. I love stamps. And you're going to see a whole big folder of stamps coming out too in a little bit. And those are, well, these right here are not. But the big folder of stamps that you'll see soon, those are all from Timu. And there is so many that I had to buy two folders. There's the second folder, not as full. I don't, I, I was like, well, I'm not even going to show you. And I'm just looking to see if there's anything that 
would look cute. Any kind of fun stamps I wanted to add. I came across some borders. Yeah, all of these stamps are from Timu, and I was such a dingledorp that I forgot <laughs> to get the the little plate, the clear plate that you stick on the stamp, you know, so you can stamp. <laughs> so I just had to use my hands. I was like, whatever, because I was using small stamps anyway. Because I did not want to get up and go get it out. But I decided just to play with stamps. And through this process, I got a little annoyed because I wasn't liking how a lot of the stamps were turning out. But that's okay. Because through this process, what do we do? Trust it. <laughs> and just keep moving forward. Because everything can be fixed. So I... I'm a little bit off screen, but I was just gathering more distress inks and things like that to see if I wanted to change up the colors. I decided I was going to get black soot um, distress ink or oxide. I can't remember which one it was, but same Tim Holtz. Um, and I'm putting one of the border stamps in there and it's like a little vine or something if I remember. But yeah, this is when I was annoyed that I didn't have the little thing, but my fingers got a little inky, and that's okay. Life of a crafter and all that jazz. Man, there is a lot of traffic outside, so if you hear all that ruckus, I apologize. But after doing the black, I wasn't too impressed. I was a little annoyed with it, so then I think I went back over with the vintage photo to kind of dirty it up I guess or subdue it just a little bit because I go back and forth um, with different stamps and playing with it I think I need to hydrate my mouth is so dry hopefully it's not too loud for you oh, pardon me Pardon me. Oh, excuse me. That may or may not be an adult beverage. I don't know. You'll have to take a guess. <laughs> But, yeah, still messing with the stamps. I'm wondering if I should fast forward any of this because I don't want to bore you while I'm digging through stamps. <laughs> All right. I decided I'd speed it up because it was like two minutes of me looking and digging and stamping and looking and digging and stamping. <laughs> and I haven't even gotten out the big folder of stamps yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you just watched me glue around the edges just to secure because I'm about to flip over the card and kind of try to see what I want to do on the back side. And I'm filing, just distressing, again, little bits and pieces that I catch along the way that don't make me happy, file them off. This is when I decided to use... My favorite paper that I talk about, every time I pull it out, I will always tell you it's my favorite paper. And one day I will be mortified when it's gone. The way it feels, it's, I don't know, it's my favorite paper. <laughs> That's all I can say. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't find it anywhere. I mean, even the way the lines are just tickles my fancy. Everything about the paper, the color of it, because it's not bright white. Mm -hmm. And it comes like on a pad, you know, with the red top. So it's like you rip it off. Oh, my God. It's the best paper in the whole world. I don't know where I got it, but I got it as a teenager. And I've been hoarding it my whole life. I've just barely started using it again. 
and I only do it because I'm adding it to crafts that I know I'll enjoy hopefully forever or, you know, give to other people so they can enjoy it, you know. But, oh, I started stamping again. That's the little loved stamp that I got at an antique shop in a little bag of stamps. And this one is a texture stamp. It's like little dots. And I'm just stamping off the edge of it, which is fun. It's, you know, you don't have to stamp all perfect. And it can be on the edge and over the edge. And I, like I said, I'm just aging it, grunging it up. All that jazz. And then I decided I was going to file the paper off. So <laughs> that's the process we're going to do now. I don't know why I didn't cut it a little bit smaller to make it a little less cumbersome. But, you know, it's not like me to make things easy for me. <laughs> I don't know if you're the same. But I feel like I make myself a glutton for punishment. But I just, I don't know. These little journaling cards, which is what they turned into because they have writing space on them. I just really like how they turned out. I think they turned out really fun. And really for only an hour of time, it took me an hour to make them. And stuff that I already had and my stash. So, I mean, anything is possible. You don't need to go to the store. All these things. I mean, yeah, once upon a time I got some of them from the store. But like, even with the Distress inks, you can use makeup. Now, some of it will come off, right? Because makeup is not permanent. Um, but you can use it to distress. You can get like a bronzing powder or a blush or an eyeshadow, whatever color you want, you know, and use like a cotton ball and take that over the edges and then take a Kleenex and like rub it in until not really any of it comes off on the Kleenex, if that makes sense. And then, um, you know, you can do layering on top of that so it makes it more secure that it won't bleed off and things like that because I know when I first started I used my makeup <laughs> heck I think you guys have seen me use makeup on one of the embossing papers just to see what it would look like when I didn't want to get my distress ink out but you know you don't have to go buy the distress ink you can use if you want the same kind of vintage photo color then like a bronzing cream would a bronzing powder would work for that um, and like the nail file, that's something that I have on hand and I have a ton of little ones that I got in those press on nails from Timu. So I keep those in my craft stash because for things like this, they come in handy. They don't work as well on nails in my opinion. So I use them on paper and I'm trying to think other things that I used, you know, like the Rick Rack and stuff like that. I mean, you can use anything. It doesn't have to be that. It can be strictly paper. Um, it can be yarn. It can be thread, you know. You don't have to hand sew either. You can just glue thread onto something or whatever. I mean, really, the possibilities are, possibilities are endless. What I'm showing you here isn't really like a tutorial as it is really just um, like an example of something that you can do to help maybe get your creative juices flowing to get in there and use some of uh, your stash up or your junk mail or your old cards that are sitting in the game room getting all vintage, <laughs> getting all perfect for your crafts. <laughs> but I mean, gosh, you can use any, anything, go get an old Monopoly game where you lost pieces, puzzle pieces. Oh, those are so fun to play with. We will have to do that in a video. If you guys want to see that, let me know because I would totally do that. That would be fun. Um, but you can do anything. So many of our games, you know, end up with missing pieces. Don't throw it away. 
If you're a crafter, use it. And I'm just grabbing some extra little pieces of paper trying to see what I want to layer with next after I distressed again and again. <laughs> but like I said, it's just all a layering game. You look and see what you like, what you don't like, and that's it. I hope you all are enjoying the junk journal series and you'll have to let me know if you like the idea of having little side videos doing crafts like this that we're going to add to the journal or really any other craft because I have a lot of things on the list that we have talked about doing on this channel. There's the fabric PS. Hold on one second. <laughs> I'll go back to that. But there's the fabric that I used in the cover of the journal. And it's just like a little scrap that I had cut off. And I decided, ooh, I'm going to use that little scrap. I'm going to distress the living daylights out of it. <clears throat> and that way it ties the tag or altered playing card with the journal. It ties it all in together. Kind of makes it home, you know. But back on the other um, thing, is I have such a list of things that we've talked about doing. Like my jewelry holder that I bought the big old mirror frame to utilize. Oh my goodness. I want to get started on that so bad because I want my jewelry up where I can look at it. Because now I've got so much that it's not fun digging in the little bags. You know, I want to see it. So <laughs> I need to get started on that. Um, and I'm sure you all want to see that. You've, you've told me that before. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking like maybe I can put some more side craft videos out during the week. Not always voiceover. Not always like this. Um, sometimes my face will be in it. Sometimes it'll be straight down on the table. Maybe sometimes it'll be like this. I don't know. But if you're into it, definitely let me know in the comments. I think I grabbed the wrong piece of fabric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was me trying to get that fabric off of my hand after freaking cutting it and messing with it and gluing it. <laughs> it was the wrong piece. I didn't want that one. So I went back to the one I originally wanted. Another thing that I really want to do is make some homemade paper to use in the journal making journey. Um, yeah, I just think that it would be super fun. I have, I usually shred a lot of our, you know, junk mail that you don't really want to be throwing out. Not necessarily, not junk mail, but sometimes junk mail, actually. <laughs> it depends on the color and quality of the paper. If it's colorful, I love to add bright, colorful paper into the shredding mix because it's like little dots, little little specks of brightness in your homemade paper, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I usually shred that. And so instead of throwing away the shreds, I then turn it into handmade paper for crafting and it works out well, but I'm a little behind. I've got a whole Tupperware, uh, like a big, you know, storage Tupperware of, it's got a big garbage bag of, gosh, I can't get the word out, shredded paper <laughs> in there. Okay, so I need to get started. But it does take a lot of sh shredded paper to make just a few homemade pieces of paper. So yeah, we that's another thing I want to I want to do with y'all. And now that the weather's warming up because I like to do that outside on the porch um once the weather is a little bit warmer. Today it's really chilly, which is why I have my big old blanket, but um once the weather is really spring-like, I'll get out there and make some paper with y'all. Maybe I'll make enough that I can gift some of it to someone. 
that might be fun if y'all are into it. I don't know. I, that would be exciting for me. Someone's homemade paper. <laughs> yes, please. But, oh my goodness. So again, here I am. I am off camera and I apologize for that, but I am filing away at the paper and uh, where the fabric is on the paper just to blend it all together, make sure everything is glued down properly. Sometimes you just have to keep going back, adding glue to the little spots that either you missed or came undone during your distressing. Um, like I said, it's a trust the process thing. You're just moving along and hoping for the best. <laughs> but you can see I'm just rubbing the glue in and getting it along all the edges and the frayed pieces of the fabric and getting it all tied down. And then I decided I wanted some more of those little dot texture stamps right over the fabric. Checking it out, seeing what else I might want to do. Oh, you know, back to distressing because it can't be grungy enough. And get all the edges again because with every file you're filing away some of what you did before. I decided to speed this last bit up for you because again it was like a good minute and a half or two minutes of me either off camera or just doing the layering work. Um, but yeah, sped that up real quick and now I'm grabbing, I think they're called grommets? I don't know. I don't know. But these little suckers, I'm going to put a hole in the top corner of the card so I can add that to have a little dangle area. So I can use one of my little, like, what are those pins called? I can't remember the name of those. Gourd pins? I don't know. Anyway, here's me just trying to pick it all out and figure it all out, which takes a minute, so I'll probably speed that up too. All right, I sped this little sucker up for you because... This was quite a bit of time while I was trying to figure out how to work this little thing. I had never used this particular tool before. I believe I bought this off of Timu as well. Um, and first I had to get it through the card, which I should have had my regular hole puncher. And I have a really nice big machine. I can't remember what it's called. It's not a machine, but it's like a handheld giant hole puncher. And it also does like the grommets on it. Um, so that's usually what I use, but I couldn't remember where I had put it when I had put it up the last time because I needed to move it. <laughs> so I was forced to figure this out and I was just having a heck of a time and I was not strong enough. So as you can see, I came back after going to my husband and saying, give me a sledgehammer or whatever, something big and burly I can bang this grommet on with. And so that's what I did. And it worked so much better, so much better, so much easier because I think I struggled with that sucker for like 10 minutes. I was so over it. And once I had it done, I was so pleased with how it looked. So all of that trial and error was worth it in the long run, but you didn't need to see all of it in long form. <laughs> you could see it sped up. But I decided to dig into my, one of my little boxes of tiny little things like tassels and flowers and stuff like that to see what I wanted to put on there. And I opted to go with a tiny little tassel because I love a tassel. I really do. Fringe, tassel, anything dangly, sparkly, floofy, you know, it's me. <laughs> so I, and I first I was actually thinking I might want to use this twine, but um, to string some beads on. And then I changed my mind when I realized, oh, I could use my tassels and still have a dangle.
And then I get in there and grab one of my gourd pins. And I got a nice little antique colored one. Oh my gosh, my stomach just growled. I'm so sorry. Stuck that on there. And now, easy peasy pumpkin squeezy, I can put whatever the heck I want onto the edge of the, onto the little safety pin, really, in all intents and purposes. If you don't have a gourd pin, which is just more round on one end, um, you can use a safety pin. As long as it's big enough to go on it, you know, you could. But this little tassel, I believe I also got the tassel from Timu. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The cases that they're in, though, right there, those were not from Timu. So here I am. I pulled the other card out while I was letting the other one sit. And I decided I wanted to use the napkin for this one. So I had already spread the split the two layers of napkin. I was just, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't another layer, but I'm going to speed up a lot of this card since it's like the same type of process because you don't need to be seeing all that, but you can see here, I'm trying to see if I can separate any more if it's, you know, got an extra ply, but it didn't. So, so I just keep a trucking on. And I sped it up because this is all the same process, just different items. So you can see what different things look like. I used the cicada paper on the last one. And this one, I'm just using a napkin. I don't know where I got these napkins. This one might have been from Timu. It could have been from the Dollar Tree. I don't know. It's a napkin. You can get them anywhere. You may even have some. I just want y'all to see how stinking easy it is. I used um, some old, uh, what's that paper called? It's uh, ledger paper. It's a little bit thicker than regular paper. And I liked the little holes on there. I thought that would be fun for a little difference in texture. And I used more of the cicada paper on the back because brown of it actually matched well with those napkins and added to that antique look. Filing, using the the distress ink, and I'm trying to play around to see if I want to use stickers or more stamps, which this is the big folder. And all of these stamps, again, were purchased off of Timu, and it is a stuffed full folder. It is absolutely stuffed. I couldn't fit any more in there if I tried. I think I have two, two big things of stamps per each slot. It's ridiculous. Um, so I decided to try to stamp a little butterfly with the lavender, which I liked the color aspect of it, but I was not happy with how it stamped. So right here you see I grabbed one of my Timu pens of course. <laughs> I think I won these off of Fishland. It's a whole big set of like 50 or something. But I just grabbed a darker purple to do an outline. And then I decided to grab the like neon orange to outline that pinky orange flower that was around the napkin. Just to give it a little extra pop, you know. And then with this one, this is when I decided I wanted to sew around some of the edges. And I did not want to get out my sewing machine and deal with changing the needle and doing all that. So I just decided to do a little hand sewing and loop it around some of the edging of the card for added texture, color. Um, I used multiple threads so I could have multiple colors. And then of course, graceful me, I poke my thumb, had to go clean it up. And then of course, after that, my phone runs out of space. So that's all I got for you, except for these little close up pictures. <laughs> so 
Was that fun? What'd you think? I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm so sorry that the end cut off so abruptly, but you know, you still got to see the finished product. Um, here's the little pen I have in there so you can change these out, you know, just some stamps on top of the card with the cicada paper, the old vintage rickrack. I added some of the stamps on the back here. I liked that the paper was thin enough you could kind of see the darkness from the card coming through. It adds to that vintagey, grungy effect that I love so much. So that's that one. And then this one, I just hand sewed it like you saw because not everybody has a sewing machine. I have one, but I don't want to have to pull it out all the time. And this is a little Brad. You didn't get to see me add that in there. I think that's when it started running out is when I was gluing this butterfly on top of the stamped butterfly that I outlined with marker. Um, and I also outlined the rose, which you saw probably if you saw that part, um, with orange marker. And But yeah, I hand sewed just some little fringy pieces. I like the texture that it adds. So I try to sew a little bit in the journal and sometimes I find hand sewing just super relaxing. And this was a napkin that I used to cover this. And I just spread the napkin, like split it. They're usually two or more ply and you could split it with some scotch tape. And I wanted to see some of the mushrooms here which is why I only put a half or a little portion of writing space. And this here I put to cover the brad, so you can feel the brad under there, but it's not very prominent. I smashed it down pretty good. <laughs> and then I added a stamp right here. I can't read it, so I'm sorry. <laughs> and then this says loved. Number three, but yeah. So those are the altered cards. And the fun thing is, is these can still be added to. So whoever wins this journal at the end of this journey will get some playing cards that they can fuss around with and decorate even more. You can add a little pocket to this, you know, and make a little spot for more paper, whatever. But yeah, because these are going to go into that journal. But anyway um yeah so i hope you all are having a fabulous morning afternoon evening whatever it is wherever you are i hope you make it a good one a happy one and a crafty one right <laughs> since i want you to craft okay i will see you in the next one bye for now